Dream chasing boxing here. Shout out to the LDBC. All right, I want to talk about this potential future matchup between Demetrius Andre versus Gennady Golovkin. I think this is a great fight. I don't care too much for the Kell Brook fight. I won't be watching it the same way I didn't watch Canelo versus Khan. But I want to talk about some guys that Triple G can actually face down the line, if not this year, definitely next year. That makes a lot of sense in my opinion. Andre has already come out and said that he's willing to fight Gennady Golovkin, but he wants to sit down and bring his name up and actually fight some guys at 154 and beat some of these top guys at 154 before he does so, which makes sense. It's something that I wish Brook did. Clash your division first, that way when you move up, it's a more, more of a credible fight compared to him having done nothing now. So that's what he wants to do. If Gennady Golovkin's team chooses to, they could offer him a substantial amount of money now and have him take the fight. Like Hatman brought up with Mike Tyson, if you pay these guys enough money, they'll get in the ring with you. So if he want, if Gennady Golovkin, let's say he wants to Andre fight sooner, instead of having to wait for him to cut out the division, he could try to do that as well. I think that would be an interesting maneuver. If you're going to go after somebody in the lower weight classes, try to get somebody like an Andre who's highly regarded. You know what I'm saying? But let's talk about the matchup. We all know the big thing is that Andre, I'm not going to say his chin is suspect, but he doesn't have the best chin. I think that's already clear in my opinion. He was dropped by Bonus Monterosian, came back and completely dominated and pretty much didn't get hit again after that. And no one has been able to dominate Marosian. He also um, got hurt by Willie Nelson with a clean little uppercut on the inside. Willie Nelson was able to catch him with. But again, it didn't wobble him, but you could tell it hurt him. And he recovered and he, you know, came back and did his thing. Willie Nelson is no soft puncher by any stretch of imagination. But none of those guys, in my opinion, especially being at 154, hit, let me not say anywhere near, but they definitely don't hit as hard as Triple G. So the fact that those guys were able to hurt him, one of them was able to drop him, lets us know that Andre doesn't necessarily have the best shit in the world. Now, is that the end-all, be-all? Of course not, because the man is highly skilled. And both dudes, after they hit him, pretty much couldn't do anything else and got dominated throughout the fight, and he ended up stopping Willie Nelson. So right there, that's got to be the edge. Um, You got to give Gennady Golovkin the edge in this fight. He's a bigger puncher. He has more experience. But he's, the the other factor is Gennady Golovkin, his age. This fight more than likely will probably happen like 2017 or 2018 if it did happen. Just because of the fact that Andre right now is at 154 and he's chasing after all these other, du other dudes, man. He's chasing the WBA belt right now. He's a WO mandatory. He's a WBC mandatory. So he's probably going to chase these guys. It makes the most sense. He's right in line to fight all of these dudes. So that's probably what he's going to do. But um, if he wanted to, like I said, man, if that fight did happen, I'm looking at it stylistically. You have to favor Golovkin because of Andre's chin. Also, it's a fight that Andre can definitely win. He has the length, he's tall, and not only that too, he knows how to box. He can fight both ways, man. He, he has options. He can go on the back foot, and it wouldn't surprise me if he put Triple G on his back foot because he can fight going forward as well. So it'll be very interesting. He's slick, but he's aggressive at the same time. So it'll be interesting to sit down and see how Gennady Golovkin handles that. And again, by the time this fight happens, Triple G will be older, probably be 35, 36. So... And Demetrius Andre will be like heading what towards his early 30s, or probably be just turning 30, if not his um late 20s. So Triple G will be going out of his prime. Andre will be entering it. So that's uh that's and that, that's a bad combination for Triple G. But again, it, it's a stylistically Andre the South Paul slick, but I wouldn't call him like a Laura slick, but because he just doesn't move as much. He's a lot more aggressive, but he can be slick in the pocket. He's going to give Triple G chances, but at the same time, though, I've seen from Andre, is he the biggest puncher in the world? No, but he definitely has respectable power. So it'll be interesting to see how Triple G fights someone who can actually land and be effective. So all in all, give him my early thoughts on this matchup. If it happened tomorrow, I'll have to favor Triple G. In two years from now, I think I have to I think I have to go with Andre, man. I think Triple G will slow down too much, and I believe his defense is suspect. And two years from now, after, you know, reflexes start to slow down even more, he's kind of going to be a sitting duck for a guy like Andre. But this is a fight all in all. I think Triple G team should go after. I think they should pursue it. It's a great fight. You guys let me know what you think of the matchup. I was just giving my initial thoughts. I didn't stylistically break it down enough. I kind of want to hear what everyone has to say. I may stylistically break it down in a different video. But the major two things I feel like is going to play a factor in this fight is Triple G's age and Andre's chin. That's my personal opinion right now. You guys let me know what you think. DCB, I'm out of here.